Stay tuned. The Jasper Pulling Series is coming up next. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the Marshall Putnam County Fairgrounds, the home of the Lucas Oil Summer Nationals. Presented by Jacobs Electronics. We're in Henry, Illinois. Ted Jones, Mike Side with you. Joining me, our expert analyst, Tom McConnell with the ATPA. And while the capacity crowd gets ready to enjoy one of the greatest pulls on the ATPA Jasper Engines and Transmissions Grand American Pulling Schedule, the track workers will finish laying down the out-of-bounds chalk line. Let's check in with Ken Stout. There's some controversy in the k and Filters Modified Four-Wheel Drive category. For starters, let's talk about the Versailles Mafia. Rumor has it that it's broken up. Three-time national champion Galen Young is said to no longer be on speaking terms with Steve Klim, who drives the Radical. Something else you might want to keep in mind when it comes to that is Galen Young is not even in the top ten in the points at this time. There's also some new players in the class maybe you're not familiar with just yet. One of them drives his truck, the Midnight Raider. His name is James Bosch, and he's leading the category right now in points. There's a couple of guys that are hot on his heels, though, right now. Terry Hagedorn is one of them. He drives the Heartbeat truck. And the other truck to watch out for is Child Play. Jason Jack drives that one. They've only got three events in this season, and the points battle is already heated up as number two and three are tied for the second position. It's 2001. We're ready to have some fun. All right, thank you very much, Kim. Stout, as we go to the KMN Modified Four-Wheel Drive, seven states represented here. And remember, brand loyalty is very important. Chevrolet against Ford against Dodge. The four-wheel drives are usually the largest class. We'll start things out with Brad, Hunter, and the Knight Rider, Tom McConnell. Nearly 30 trucks are entered in this KMN Modified Four-Wheel Drive class, and Brad Hunter will set the mark to beat. He has yet to win an event this year on the Jasper Pulling Series. 275.24 feet. I don't know if that'll be enough. A full pull, 300. I think it'll be good enough to hold up. Well, it's hard to say. The track's got so much moisture in it. I don't know if it's going to come around or go away. I'm afraid it may go away, so I wasn't going to take a chance. And last time, I'm just going to hang in there and see if it'll hold out. Coming up next, a good look right there at Aaron Mobley, the Mad Dog. As he'll get ready to pull right now, he's out of Harrodsburg, Kentucky. Aaron Bobley just got off of his first ever Jasper Engines Grand American win in his hometown, or his home county, we should say, in Danville, Kentucky. Very tough competitor. He's got to be 275.24, and dead. he does it. Aaron Bobley, 282.46. That will give us a new leader and another mark to beat as this board comes up into the troubles of ladies and gentlemen. Meet Pat Paul. Pat now lives in Georgia. He's originally from Washington, where this truck was one of the toughest trucks on the West Coast, making a very good run, a huge 800 cubic inch Ford motor in it. He takes over the lead, Ted. Great run, 284. Point five four, great run there for Pat Paul. As we see Jim Luke backing up the Buckeye Shaker, let me ask you something. Could it be, Tom, that the track is getting better? Each guy pulls a little further. There's an incredible disadvantage to pulling outdoors in the daylight. The track will change. It will get better. It will get worse. But granted, when you're pulling in this high humidity and the high heat, the dirt content will change due to the moisture. They're either going to dig it up or it's going to dissipate. And Jim Luke, though, on his way to a killer run, and yes, he takes over the lead, 289.02. The Chevy fans are happy. This ESPN2 in the driver's seat coverage of the ATPA Grand American Series is brought to you by Jasper Engines and Transmissions, the leader in remanufactured engines and transmissions, and by k &N Filters. Ask for them by name. We'll be back with more. You're watching the Lucas Oil Summer Nationals from Henry, Illinois. We're ready to get going with the four-wheel drives, and we keep everything going. Each puller pulls a little further. Can James Bosch do it with the Midnight Raider? Ted, James Bosch has been the guy to beat, currently number one on the Jasper Pulling Series in the K&N four-wheel drive truck class, and no surprise, he blows it out the end, takes the sled past the 300-foot mark. He is now the guy to beat, and currently, as we said, number one of the points. 
as Gary Barter comes up now with the fast break seven away. A reminder that full pull was 300 feet. Let's see if Barter can do it over to one side of the track. Tippy toeing along that out of bounds line. Does the Chevy have enough? Oh no! Bogs down 296.62 feet. So James Bice, the only guy with a full pull. Jeff Schaefer, the win, lose or draw truck, will try and change all of that. He also is running a Chevrolet. Now, this is an interesting truck. Jeff Schaefer's win, loser, draw, Mount Vernon, Ohio. Watch it, Ted. It will change color as it goes down the track. This is that special paint that General Motors has come up with. The paint doesn't get him out, but boy, the horsepower of the Chevrolet does. Jeff Schaefer's out two Chevrolets in the pull-off then. Well, we will have a pull-off two of them going 300 feet. Here comes Jason Jack, the wild child. Last year, Jason Jack did not recommit to the Jasper Engine Pulling Series, but he ran all the events, won a couple of hooks. This year he pre-committed and has yet to win one. Going for the points, and the Ford comes up short, just under two feet. Ah, he would give anything for two feet right now, but they call it the Sport of Engines as we get a good look at Larry Smith, the lean meat machine, he calls it. Michigan is home to a lot of tough four-wheel drives. This one is one that would go into that category very strong machine on his way to a very good run and he has problems Ted. Whoa, Fire yeah. under the hood look at the k &N filter. The flames are coming out of it. Let's take a look Tom right now with our Lucas Oil instant replay. We'll try and see what happened. He was moving right down the course. You can see straight and true the mud coming off all four of those wheels. Still going just fine. I don't see where the problem came up. Still going. Oh, all of a sudden he dipped down. Oh, look at the body shake. And there comes that fire you talked about. Burning up that k and filter. That's now a hot filter. <laughs> no doubt about it. Come to find out he had a fuel line buzz, and sometimes the fire can land right on the filter. That's what happened. Things got hot under the hood, to say the least. Can and modified four-wheel drive pull-off, as Tom told you earlier, we had some 30 trucks here. These are the guys that made a full pull, beginning with James Bush, the Midnight Raider, and they'll have a floating finish line. Tom, explain that. That means they pull it as far as they can. A full pull doesn't count. You just keep pulling. James Bush sets the mark to be 317.52. Don't worry about the horse. Just load the wagon, man. This bow tie is driving. 317.52, that is a heck of a job in a pull-off. Well, if you want to come to play, you got to be a big dog, because there's a lot of people out here who are gunning for it. I'll tell you something, ladies and gentlemen, this big dog's barking. Yeah, that big dog's not staying on the porch, but neither is this one. Rags to riches, Don Grant needs to go better than 317 feet. Former Mopar man switched to Chevrolet, has yet to win a Jasper Engine Grand American event. Today could very well be his day. He's so close. Does he do it? No. 301.92. Barely beat his original 300 foot full pull. Let's take another look and see exactly what happened with Don Grant as he comes off the starting line right there. This was his first attempt. Now, if they don't get past 100 foot, they get to go back to the sled. Good thing he took his pull the second time. May have uh, caused a problem, though, when he did that. I don't know. But Jeff Schaefer's up now. He also had a full pull. Remember the numbers, 317. This is the truck that changes colors. Well, the paint's not going to help him get down the line. He's getting all over the track. It's going to cost him on the far end. Jeff Schaefer will come up short. Let's go to get it out. Excellent job. I know you didn't get the win here, but right now you're standing in second place. That's a real plus in this category. Yeah, as tough as the truck was here today, that's pretty good. We put some pretty heavy hitters back here in the back of the pack that didn't get them pull off the so-called Kentucky Mafia. I think it's the Three Stooges. Uh, they've only got one truck in the pull-off, so it looks like we might have hurt them today. Ooh, he's starting <laughs> something up there with the Kentucky Mafia. And the guy he's actually referring to is Don Grant, who has Tom Tamoyan, the spellbound truck. He does his motor as we check out Someone from Missouri, Terry Hagedorn, one of the toughest four-wheel drives in this K&N modified class. Hagedorn getting close, but no cigar. 309.94. Well, that's good for second place so far. And now one more look at Byron Neiman, the grounds for divorce. This will be one of our final pullers in the pull-off. Actually, you could count this truck as one of the for sales mafia, too. So maybe Jeff should say there's two on we check out James Bosch, the guy currently in the lead in this K&N Modified Blast. 
Byron Neiman will come up short. Bosch wins it. Congratulations, man. Another job well done. Oh, thank you. It's a little nerve-wracking watch four good trucks come in behind you there, but we made a good pull in the fall off. We were pretty confident about ourselves, but a lot of tough trucks here. You always worry to the last one. So here's our chance for pulling series final standings in the k and modified four-wheel drive results. After four of 13 events, they'll be gaining points for. We'll be back with Duramax Diesel Lightweight Superstock. Back in Henry, Illinois, we'll remind you that for all of the latest news and notes from the world of motorsports, visit rpm.espn.com. Now, while we get ready to hook up the lightweight super stock tractors, let's go down to Tom McConnell for this interesting piece of information. This is the second hook on the Jasper engines and transmissions pulling series for the Duramax Diesel's lightweight super stock. And so far, the controversies from the years gone by are still very controversial today. That controversy, of course, are the traditional diesel super stock tractors, like what Mike Savy and the Canadian Mist is running here, against the alcohol tractors, the guys that aren't blowing the smoke in the class. In the past, the alcohol tractors have dominated this particular category, but the diesels have stayed in there trying to do their best to keep up. During the winter months, the diesel superstocks spend a lot of money and a lot of time increasing their horsepower. You're going to see it when these diesels hook today. They're turning the tires harder than they ever have before, but the alcohol guys are doing it just as well. In fact, at a regional event some two weeks ago in Illinois, Larry Phillips, your defending Jasper Engines co-champion, went heads up against Darryl Meath and the Squealer. When the dust settled, the alcohol John Deere of Darryl Meath was some 30 feet in front of the nation's number one diesel. Will this controversy get settled here in Henry at the highest pain pull in the history of the Jasper Engine pulling series? We'll find out, but chances are it's going to be a battle to the end between the smokers and the alcohol tractors. Well, Larry Phillips looks very intense right there. We'll find out as we go into the next category right now. We'll get things started out with Brent Long and the Long Machine. Now, that's not a very original name. Well, on all these alcohol tractors, or I should say on most of these alcohol tractors, there's two letters written on the cylinder head. It says LM. It means Long Machine. This is the guy that builds the cylinder heads for most of the alcohol tractors in America. He is absolutely awesome. He makes a full pull. Let's go to Ken. First full pull of the day. Thank you. Yeah, that, that hooked pretty good. I think the track will probably come around a little bit as the, you know, moisture gets worked into it and the marbles get a little smaller. I, there'll be two or three more out at least. We talked about Larry Phillips as he backs up and gets ready to hook. Let's go to Ken Stout with a special award. I know you can't see IH on the front of this thing, but it's definitely an international. Don't worry, Cornbinder fans. It might not look like it, but this thing is red. Well, at least the blood that's running through it is red. Fear no alcohol is what it says on the front because Larry McPhillips is still burning diesel in a very tough category of super stock. But he has definitely changed the color of this thing, and you're going to win the Lucas Oil Best Appearing Award for the Insanity Tractor or the Plow Hound, whatever you'd like to call it. This thing is simply gorgeous. Tell us what color it is. Well, it's a, it's a chrome illusion that uh, DuPont had come out with uh, probably a couple years back. Uh, a local paint shop, l, l Body Shop, Bill Lancaster and uh, Timmy... Uh, Timmy Lucas, uh, with their help, they've done all the uh, body work. And, and uh, Maybrier's uh, E-Town furnished the paint. It's uh, DuPont uh, giving it to them. How many of your fans or how many international fans were a little upset with you because this thing's not red anymore? The first night out, we was up in next Cincinnati, and, and the guys look at it and they say, what's this? And uh, I said, well, it's just a different look. So that's what we got. Mind you, ladies and gentlemen, you can paint your tractor or car the same thing, but get ready to spend some money. A quart of this paint costs you about 800 bucks. Whoa, 800 bucks. Hope he doesn't crash that thing. Let's see how well it pulls with all that fancy paint. Remember, just a few weeks ago, the best alcohol tractors in the country ran up against this, what is probably the strongest diesel in the country, and put 30 feet on him. No surprise here, though. The first go-round, Larry Phillips makes a full pull. It's going to be interesting to see what happens in the pull-off as we check out Jeff Dockel out of Wisconsin. Runs a lot with the Badger State Pullers. Some old sheet metal here. It's an Oliver, Ted. 
I was going to accuse it of being a John Deere. It looked like it was green, but I do remember the Olivers. However, the Olivers will not dominate today. Only 283 feet, but two full poles. There's going to be a pull-off. Here comes one of those green John Deeres, Mike Savey. Probably the strongest diesel deer. He and Randy Payne just battle it out between themselves for the bragging rights of the strongest diesel. And will Savey get it out? No, so close. Some 10 feet back right now. Two red ones, one diesel, one alcohol in the pull -off. Well, as we go to break, let's check out the Lucas Oil leaderboard. We'll be back. If you like trucks and tractors, you came to the right place. Welcome back to the Lucas Oil Summer Nationals. We're in Henry, Illinois. This is the part of the Jasper Engine and Transmission Pulling Series. Ted Jones and Tom McConnell, Mike Slide here with you. As we get a good look at John Hall backing up his Wampum Mini Mo. That's got to be a Minneapolis Mo lead. Oh, absolutely. And the other thing that's unique about this tractor, it is the only four-cylinder in this class. This class is made up of inline six cylinders. Here's the only four cylinder. He was third at Bristol last year, and now he's in the pull-off, Ted. Never count the mini mo out. I never will, and as our next puller gets ready to hook, let's go to Ken Stout. Winning this week's Jazz for his Engines and Transmissions Best Engineered Award will be Daryl Meese and the Squealer. Now, you might take a look at this tractor and say to yourself, doesn't look like anything special to me. In fact, it doesn't even have the name on it yet, Squealer. Well, that's because this thing is still underworks, if you will. They've made some changes in this category, and one of the changes that they made is if you're burning alcohol, much like Daryl Meese, you have to change some weight in this tractor. And unlike drag racing on the asphalt where they add weight, they actually take weight away from these guys to handicap you a little bit. But from what I understand, this thing is still a bad boy. Well, you know, the diesels did get more weight for this season, and to compensate for that, we went to the drawing board, come up with some extra weight where we could transfer to the front, which has always been a problem with alcohol tractors in a lightweight class. So we've done our work at home over the winter to try to overcompensate that and, and still be running the top. We, we don't want to tell everything that, we, that we've that we kind of stumbled across, more or less, a lot of it is. And a lot of it's homework, a lot of it's just pure luck. But, uh, you know, when you're at the top, you got to stay at the top. And to stay at the top, you got to keep coming up with ideas and, and things to, to stay there. We'll, we'll find out what the... Actually, ATPA decides to do if they feel like the rules are competitive the way they are right now, or if some more guys are going to step up and engineer their tractors as well as Daryl Meese has. In addition to being well engineered, it's a good looking tractor. Nice paint job on it there. So let's take a look at the squealer and see how well it can do. Remember, take the full pole. Daryl Meese usually has a problem of too much horsepower in the class. He's on his way to a good run, but he's not hooking up. He overpowers the track, and Daryl will come up short. Surprising run there, 278, and James, we check out Bernie Flat. Boy, Good. this is little bad Alice, and it has to be an Alice County. Oh, absolutely. Beautiful tractor getting close there to the out-of-bounds line. The ATPA official, you see him on the far end, making sure he was legal. Bernie stays in bounds but will come up short if he hadn't got on the brake head chances are he would have made a full pull about a foot and a half short right down that out of bounds line Stephen man pulling now with the unbelievable tractor finished in the top five at the national farm machinery show this past february really strong running small motored alcohol tractor he will come up short. Man, it is really close out there tonight, Ted. Things are turning red out there, running on empty, ladies and gentlemen. Brian Course with an international harvester. Oh, international got big problems. What happened there? Well, the first thing, he does have another option. He did not get past 100 feet. ATPA rules say if you don't get past 100 feet on your first attempt, you can back right up and try it again. That's just what he's done on his way now to an okay run. He's just doesn't seem to have the momentum. I see some water and oil coming out from the blowback. He will come up short, but still a very good run, 291. He was up in the hunt. Now things turn green again. Here comes the disaster. I've seen Mike Hoppy make so many wild and crazy runs. I mean, Ted, he lives up to the name of the sheet metal subside. Now he's starting to get squirrely on the track. Hold her inbounds, Mike. Hold her inbounds. He holds her inbounds, but the John Deere will come up short. Well, he had to use a lot of brake right there to keep him going out of bounds. That is understandable. Here comes Ken McCallop. We've seen him many times here on our ESPN2 coverage with his famous smoker. Of course, the smoker was in 1996. 
six to Jasper Inches and Transmission runner up in the points, consistently in the top five in the Jasper Inches points for many, many years. Only 301 cubic inches out of this motor, still running the smoker and dead. He comes up short, and yes, we've got word here from the ATPA track official. Just look at that smoke here. But here's what's going on if you check out the Lucas Oil replay. Kid's going on to a good run, but his throttle cable broke. We'll take a break. When we come back, the pull-off. This ESPN2 Speed World in the driver's seat coming. The ATPA Jasper Pulling Series being brought to you by Duramax Diesel, the most powerful diesel engines available in a heavy-duty pickup. And by Lucas Oil Products, number one in the trucking industry. Here we go with the pull-off, ladies and gentlemen. This is Brent Long, the long machine from Aldrich, Missouri, the only Red International to make it. Well, actually, the only Red International, that's an alcohol burger. We've got another Red Diesel back there. He will set the mark to beat. Now, remember, the alcohol tractors weigh some 250 pounds lighter than the diesels. And in the sport of pulley, that's where you want it. Brent set the long to beat 306.86. Let's see if the weight plays a factor here. Larry Phillips. Getting on the brake there. Front end lands down kind of hard, blowing the diesel smoke out. He'll be just a shy amount short, 305.92. The sport of inches, ladies and gentlemen. And the last puller, John Hall. Kind of the underdog in the class, only running with a four-cylinder. The Moline starting to bounce. He does not have the momentum of the other two. Brent Long will win it. The diesel guy's getting away in X-300 doesn't hurt a thing in a deal like this. You know, where it takes a good amount of front end weight today. Tracks a really nice track. Well, obviously, you feel pretty good about the rule changes. You think they're pretty equal. I think we ought to run heads up. <laughs> ah, the controversy rages on right now. Here comes our Duramax diesel hot pull. And, of course, that has to go to Brent Long for that outstanding pull. Look, he's got flames on the front of it so hot. Here's our Jasper Pulling Series final results. Brent Long in first place, down in fifth. Stephen Mann, congratulations to those pullers. That'll be a wrap from Henry, Illinois. I'm Ted Jones for Ken Stout and Tom McConnell. Thanks for joining us. So long, everyone. This ESPN2 coverage has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. For more, log on to ESPN.com.